Hi, this is Giles. I appreciate you tuning in to this podcast and thank you for supporting our ministry campaigns. It's my prayer that these podcasts will help you to experience God's very best in every area of your life. Last time, I told you the difference between the anointing in you and the anointing on you, okay? You have to understand that difference, that distinction. When you become a Christian, when you invite Jesus into your heart, the Bible says you are born again. You are regenerated. How does that happen? By the anointing by the Holy Spirit. You've been born of the flesh, okay, carne, but now you've been born of the Spirit. The Spirit of God came upon Maria, upon Mary. She became pregnant with Jesus. Jesus was born through her. Now the Spirit of God comes upon you and puts new life into you. You become born again a new person on the inside of you. Say amen. Amen. It's the work of the Holy Spirit coming in you. Now I told you, when the Spirit comes in you, He never leaves you. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. The Bible says that He comes inside of us to live, to abide, to reside, to make a house, to make a home. Hallelujah. He's not a visitor, he's a dweller. And he never leaves, okay? That's the Spirit in you. But the Spirit also wants to be on you. So there's a difference. The Spirit in you is for you, for your pleasure, for your joy, for your peace. When the Spirit is on you, it's for other people. So other people can be blessed by your life. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Jesus was the Son of God, but He received the Spirit on Him when He was baptized in the River Jordan. The Spirit came down like a dove from heaven and rested on Him. When He got up and preached, He said, The Spirit of God is upon me to preach the gospel, to heal the sick, to deliver the captives, to open the blind eyes, to uh, set at liberty the uh, bruised. Do you see? The Spirit was on him so he could serve others. Amen. So the Spirit in you makes you a son, but the Spirit on you makes you a servant. Let's say that together. The Spirit in me makes me a son. The Spirit on me makes me a servant. Hallelujah. We need both. We need both. We're sons and we're servants. You know, I have four children. Wow. They're all my sons. When they were young, they just made a mess in my house. Just bagonsa, bagonsa, bagonsa. Children make a mess. But as they grow older, they mature. They got, they're still my sons, but now they're becoming servants too. Instead of making a mess all the time, now sometimes they clear up the house too. They remove the mess. The more mature, the more servant. The more mature you are, the more you serve. You'll always be a son, but you also need now to become a servant. But to serve the Lord, you need the anointing. You can't do anything without the anointing. Let's have a look here. I'm talking to you today about the person whom God anoints. I'm not talking about the anointing in you. I'm talking about the anointing on you. Okay? This message isn't to make you a Christian. You already are a Christian. Amen. Amen. But this message is to help you Be anointed. Live with the Spirit on you all the time. Hallelujah. So that you can serve now. I want to make you not just sons, but servants. Why do I want you to be a servant? 
because if you serve the Lord, you will be rewarded in glory. You will have a crown in the kingdom. In the kingdom of God, it's the servants who are the kings. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. And so here in Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 8, the scripture says, Always be clothed in white and always anoint your head with oil. Oil is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. God wants you always with a head anointed with oil. He wants you always with the anointing on you. Your passion, your desire is to live an anointed life. Not just with the Spirit in you, but with the Spirit on you. Because when the Spirit is on you, you can serve, you can preach, you can heal. This world can only be changed by people with the anointing on them. When you have the anointing on you, you become a world transformer. You became, become a history maker. You become a generation shaker. You've got to get the anointing on you always, as much as possible. When you are walking in the natural man, in your natural strength, you cannot help the kingdom of God. You cannot advance the kingdom of God. We like you. Hallelujah. You're a nice person. You're a beautiful person. You're an intelligent person. You're a fashionable person. You're an academic. All those things you can be. But you can only advance the kingdom with the anointing on you. Huh? It's different. The spirit of God manifesting on you. Jesus was a lovely person, but he only advanced the kingdom when the anointing was upon him. Say amen. So God wants us to be anointed all the time, okay? And we need his anointing to do his will. The word Christian, uh, remember the word Christ? It's not his family name. It's not like Giles Stevens, my name, Giles Stevens, Jesus Christ. No, no, no. Jesus means Savior. Christ means anointed one, the anointed Savior. Hallelujah. So it's like saying Andre, the anointed one. Yes. Titus, the anointed one. Victor, the anointed. We are all the anointed ones because we are Christians. Christians. We carry the power. Hallelujah. We carry life-giving power. So if we are Christians, then we need to always have the anointing upon us. Okay? In the parables of Matthew 25, two parables. The first one is the wise and the foolish virgins. Who are the wise? Who are the foolish? The only distinction, the only difference is that the foolish had a little bit of oil and the wise had lots of oil. In other words, the foolish had the spirit in them, uh, but not upon them. The wise had the spirit in them and upon them. They had oil to spare, oil flowing over, Oil to light the way for others. Hallelujah. If you want to be wise, you need the anointing on you, not just in you. In the eyes of heaven, you're a fool if you just have it in you. God has more for you. Now watch this. The second parable, Matthew 25, is the parable of the talents. The talents. Remember the story. Three servants. One with five talents, one with two talents, and one with one talent. Uh, those who have five and two, they multiply their talents. God is happy. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Hallelujah. And he gives them more talents. And he gives them a reward. You shall rule over the cities. Hallelujah. In my kingdom, you know, God, when Jesus comes back, he will give positions of authority to his faithful ones. Say amen. Uh, he will give cities. I believe 
that at his return, he's going to fill the whole universe with his glory, not just planet Earth. So those who have been faithful with little will be given much. If you've been faithful with the talents you have here, then God isn't going to give you just a Perecida de Goiânia and Annapolis to look after, to go. No, he's going to give you Saturn and Jupiter and Mars and other galaxies. And you're going to go there with creative power to fill the universe with the glory of God. Say amen, somebody. The faithful ones get rewarded. The unfaithful one, he has his talent taken away. Why are these two parables together? Because if you want to be a faithful servant, first of all, you must be a wise virgin. In other words, they're connected, they're linked, vinculado. You need the anointing to be a faithful servant. You need the anointing flowing through you, above you, in order to use your talents and advance the kingdom. Say amen. So, let's have a look quickly at the people that God anoints. Because you want to be one of them. And the first type of person who God anoints is the person who is hungry and thirsty. Jesus, in John chapter 7, 37, he said these well-known words. He said, if anyone thirsts, say thirsts, uh, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. So the first person that God anoints is the thirsty person. Hallelujah. You know, you can't be thirsty for somebody else. Uh, I can't have thirst for you. You can't have thirst for me. You have to have your own thirst. You can't drink for anyone else. Can you drink for me? No. You can drink for you, but you can't drink for me. It's mine. So this is an individual choice. You can choose to drink. You can choose to have thirst. Hallelujah. Okay. And it's so glorious this, because when you drink, it's for you. But Jesus said, if you drink, then what comes into you will come out of you. Okay? And so you drink for yourself, but out of you come rivers of living water. Drinking is for you, but the rivers are for other people. Are you seeing how God works? The more you drink, the more you can give. Hallelujah. So if you want to be used by God, be thirsty. If you want to touch lots of lives, drink lots of his presence. And here's the grace of God. If you drink just a little bit, out of you will flow rivers of living water. Out of you will flow lots. One of the biggest rivers in volume in the world is the Amazon River. Hallelujah. Here in Brazil, in terms of volume, there is more water flowing out of that river than any other river. Hallelujah. But Jesus didn't say one river is going to flow out of you. He said rivers, plural, will flow out of you. Rivers of healing, rivers of blessing, rivers of power, rivers of joy. Wherever you go, because of rivers flowing out of you, the atmosphere will change. Faith will increase. Miracles will happen. The anointing will be transferred. The dead will be raised. The sick will be healed. The paralytics will jump and shout. Hallelujah. Why? Because you've become a fountain of rivers. Amen. Amen. That's what God has for you. For you to shine the light. For you to change the environment. When you arrive, things happen. Say amen. amen. So the first type of person that God anoints is the thirsty and the hungry. I write here, like a garden hose. What's a hose? Kana, nujajin. A garden hose. You can sometimes block the hose or you can turn the tap off. I want to tell you, open the hose. Open it. Okay? Because the more you give, the more will flow. 
That's why we should be not just hearers of the word, but doers of the word. Not just students, but teachers. Not just disciples, but disciplers. Not just learners, but preachers. Say amen. amen. You're sitting at my feet today to learn, but your time will come tomorrow to teach. Amen. The more you give, the more you will receive. Amen. So we're talking about the first characteristic. Be thirsty and be hungry. Let's go a little bit deeper. Here in Job, Job, everybody remembers Job in the Old Testament, chapter 29, verse 6. He writes, when my steps were bathed with cream, say cream, uh, and the rock poured out rivers of oil for me. Rivers of oil. What a beautiful expression. Rivers of oil, not rivers of water, rivers of oil. Why oil? Again, this is symbolic. You know the Holy Spirit is invisible. Yes, invisible. So God gives us symbols for us to understand the invisible. We can't see him, but God gives us symbols like oil, fire, wind. They help us to understand the Holy Spirit. Amen. A river of fire, hallelujah, is another symbol of the Holy Spirit. So Job is saying here that when my steps are bathed with cream, then rivers of the anointing, rivers of power begin to flow. What is cream then? What's the key to this scripture? The word cream. What is cream? Cream, cremi, is the best part of the milk. In England, we cook with lots of cream. In France, we cook with lots of cream. Beautiful. Here in Brazil, you cook stroganoff with cream. Cream. Amen. It's the best, the richest part of the milk. And what does milk point to? Milk points to the Word of God. It is the milk of the Word. So in other words, don't just be thirsty for His presence, but be hungry for His Word. When you're hungry for His Word, rivers of oil will flow through your life. Say amen, somebody. Hallelujah. So the second type of person that God anoints are His sheep. At the beginning of the service, we read the most famous song in the world. It's the best rock song. I'm a rocker. Rockeru, huh? I'm a rocker. Why am I a rocker? Because Jesus is the rock. And he cannot roll. Amen. He's the rock that doesn't roll, that doesn't move. He's the, he's the firm foundation. He's the rock of ages. Say amen. And in this psalm, we read that David saying, you prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. Okay, there's that word oil again. Now, when people were anointed in the Old Testament, they had oil poured on their heads. The kings, the prophets, and the priests. Oil was poured on their heads. Even today, when we ordain a pastor for the ministry, we pour oil on his head. But is there power in the oil? No. That oil you can use to fry chicken. There's no power in the oil. The oil is symbolic. Symbolic of what? A spiritual oil, an invisible oil, the Holy Spirit, the anointing. David here is not talking about physical oil. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. He's saying, you pour your spirit upon me. Hallelujah. When your spirit is upon me, it makes me an overcomer. I sit at your table in the presence of enemies, not friends, enemies, but I'm still a winner. I'm still an overcomer. Why? Because there's food and there's oil. There's the Word of God and there's the presence of the Holy Spirit. And look, he said, my cup, my cup runs over. 
transborder. Amen. So in other words, this oil isn't just for me. It's to make me a servant. It's to make me a king. It's to make me a giant killer. It's to make me an overcomer. Look at this. This is Psalm 23, the most famous psalm. Everybody knows this psalm. And what's the psalm about? The Lord is my, the Lord is my shepherd. Say shepherd. Uh, so if the Lord is David's shepherd, then David is the Lord's sheep. God anoints his sheep. God anoints those who follow him. God anoints those who hear his voice. Hallelujah. If you're a sheep of the Lord, the anointing will manifest upon you. But let's go a little bit deeper. Because at the beginning of the psalm, David said, You lead me to lie down in green pastures. Pastores verdadeis, was his father. Amen. Pastores verdadeis. You make me to lie down. This word lie down means to rest. Descansar. Okay. So this is one of the great paradoxes of scripture. When you rest, you become empowered. When you sit down, God stands up. When you stand up, God sits down. Say to your neighbor, sit down. Rest. When you rest, God works for you. When you work, God rests. So let God work. Let the Spirit work. Let the anointing work. Okay? The anointing comes for those who rest in His promises. Amen? For sheep and sheep who rest. Number three, the third type of person who God anoints is the one who loves Righteousness. Say righteousness. righteousness. It's one of the most difficult words for a Brazilian to say. Righteousness. We have two words. You have one word. You say justiça. Okay? Uh, we have righteousness and justice. Okay? So justiça propria is self-righteousness. Okay? It's tough. I know. But the Bible says in Psalm 45 verse 7 you love righteousness and hate wickedness therefore God your God has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions wow can you see how the word of God confirms the word of God hallelujah uh, the psalmist is saying you're going to be anointed if you love righteousness. The power of God's going to be upon you if you love righteousness. And it's great because he explains that this anointing is the oil of gladness. Say amen, somebody. You know, the Bible says that it's the joy of the Lord that is our strength. Hallelujah. So the person who's happy, the person who's joyful, is actually the person who's strong in the Lord. Amen. Interestingly, if you read the New Testament in Hebrews chapter 1, we know that this psalm was written about Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He is the one who loved righteousness, who hated wickedness, and therefore God, his God, anointed him with the oil of gladness more than his companions. Jesus was the most anointed of all people. Say amen. amen. How did you know Jesus was anointed? If you went back 2,000 years and there was a big crowd, imagine in your imaginations, you go to Galilee, to Galilee, the multitudes are there. And there are so many thousands, and you want to know which one is Jesus. Which one is Jesus? Would you know him because he's wearing white clothes? Maybe. I don't know. Would you know him because there's a halo around his head? Like some medieval artists, they paint with a 
halo on his, which I don't think, I don't think he had this. How would you recognize Jesus? I'll tell you how. He was the happiest person in the crowd. He was the most joyful one because the Bible tells us that he was anointed with the oil of gladness much more than everybody else. Everybody else was with stress, with sorrow, with trouble, weighing them down. Oh, I don't know how I'm going to pay the bill. I don't know what's happening in my future. But Jesus was always in a place of perfect peace and perfect joy. Why? Because he knew his Father was with him. Say Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Let me help you here. The more you understand that you are righteous, the more joy you will have. Yes, it's quiet now. Let me help you a bit more. Okay? When the scripture says he loved righteousness, you need to remember there are two types of righteousness. In the new covenant, righteousness comes by faith. Hallelujah. Not by works. Ours is a gospel of Jesus Christ wherein the righteousness of God is revealed. Hallelujah. Remember what Paul taught Romans 14 and 7? The kingdom of God is not eating and drinking. It is righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Say to your neighbor, I'm so glad you're righteous. But not because of you, but because of God's grace. Hallelujah. The more you understand that, the more anointed you will be. Are you hearing? The more you preach that, the more anointing will manifest when you preach. The fourth characteristic, okay? God anoints those who walk in unity and harmony. Harmony is diversity in unity. Isn't that right? Everybody, although we're different, heading in the same direction. Hallelujah. Psalm 133, another famous one. The scripture says, Behold, how good and pleasant is it when brethren dwell together in unity. Hallelujah. Uh, when you have lots of people, all with one heart, with one mind. What happens there? Verse 3 explains, For there the Lord commanded his blessing and what's the blessing? Life forevermore. Or let's say the anointing, the spirit, the power, the presence, the life of God, the Zoe of God. Hallelujah. Where does the anointing manifest? Where there is diversity in unity. Where the brethren, the multitude have one heart. If we can create one heart, one voice, unisono, vocês falam em português, huh? Uh, one sound to the Lord. In that place, God pours out his spirit. Who remembers in Solomon's temple, they had the 120 priests, they had trumpets, they had wind instruments, they had stringed instruments, they had all the people. And the Bible says they lifted up their voice in one voice. And then there appeared a cloud that filled the whole temple. What was the cloud? The nuving. It was the anointing of God. The presence of God. Unity attracts the blessing. Hallelujah. Did you notice at the beginning of this service, we were singing to Jesus. Huh? How great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Do you see, we were all looking to God. We forgot ourselves. We weren't looking at me, weren't looking at you, weren't looking. Everybody focused on the same person, the goodness, the greatness of God. When the brethren have the same focus, what happened? The anointing became manifest. Did you feel the anointing when we were singing today? Why? Brethren in unity. Say amen. amen. Now, just a parenthesis. 
Be careful. Be careful. Because the devil knows this. Hello. The devil knows that the power manifests when there's unity. So what does the devil do? Tries to create division. The devil works to destroy unity. Unity in your marriage. Hello. Unity between parents and children. Unity in cell groups. Unity in churches. The devil is like a lion roaring, trying to create division. So be careful. Be alert. Be aware. Don't allow disunity. It will take away your anointing. I'm married to a beautiful Brazilian girl. Hallelujah. Ah, beautiful Brazilian girl. You know, I was brought up, I was raised in England. My father was a general in the British Army. I traveled from London, Oxford, Hong Kong, Moscow, Helsinki, many capital cities in the world, many important people. Wow, that's my upbringing. I went to private school. I went to university in Oxford. Wow, that's my story. My wife, very different. My wife comes from Sanklerlandia. <laughs> the name is wrong, the name is wrong. It, when I first went to Sanklerlandia, I took a plane from London, 12 hours to Sao Paulo. I changed airport uh, from Guarulhos to Congonhas, six hours. I waited more, six hours. I took my flight, Congonhas, Goiânia. I arrived in Goiânia. I changed from Goiânia to the omnibus, to the, to the bus. I, I took the bus, another four hours. Bus to San Luis de Montes Belos, okay? Another four and a half hours, okay? I arrive in San Luis and my father-in-law arrives with a camionette, a pickup truck. I go pickup truck to Sanclerlandia. In Sanclerlandia, then I change to a small car and we go to the farm, to the fazenda. Wow. Driving on a road without asphalt, okay? Uma estrada de chão, vocês falam. But it didn't, it didn't look like a road, it looked like a river without water. Three days to arrive there. Three days to arrive. My father-in-law said, Welcome to the center of the universe. I thought to myself, No, this is the end of the world. <laughs> My wife was brought up on the farm. She went to school uh, sometimes by cart, by horse. Once a week, she went to town. She, her farm had no electricity. It had no telephone. It had no car. It's a different world to me. I'm just showing you how different I am to my wife. There are many differences, but I've noticed this. If I can have unity in my marriage, then my house is blessed. My children are blessed. My ministry is blessed. The devil wants to divide us. So what do I do? I don't think of the past, all our differences. I focus on the future because my wife is a servant of Jesus. She's an evangelist. She's going to heaven. It doesn't matter where you come from. You need to have the same destination. Say amen. Don't let the devil divide you because he'll steal your anointing. I value my anointing. So I need to care for my marriage. I need to care for my children. I need to care for my cell group. I need to keep my church unified. Say amen, somebody. Okay, quickly now, number five. God anoints those who are generous. Say generous. Let's read ver this verse together. Can you see it there? Can you try and read it with me? One, two, three. The generous soul will be made rich, and he who waters will also be watered himself. Proverbs 11.25. Just quickly, because our time is going. The word rich 
in Hebrew is this word dashen. Say dashen. And literally it means fat. Fat. Uh, fat. Gordu. Uh, but you know, fatness also speaks of oil. Okay? It's the gordura. It's the fatness that makes oil. So really what this scripture is saying is that the generous person will be filled with oil, will be made anointed. Hallelujah. He's rich in anointing. If you want to have lots of anointing, remembering that anointing makes the difference. Anointing gives you influence. Okay. If you want to have lots of anointing, be generous. Be generous. Who are the generous ones? The ones who understand grace. Hallelujah. If you understand that you received all your blessings, not because you deserve them, but because God loves you, because God's gracious, because of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. You receive them by faith, not by works. If you receive, if you, if you understand, look, I have a wife because God is good. I have a house because God is good. I have a car because God is good. I have a, I have a money in my bank because God is good. I have, you know, wow. If you realize you don't deserve that, I don't deserve a wife. I don't deserve a car. I don't deserve a house. Now, when I realize that, then I can also be generous to others. Let me help you. I have two cars. My sister-in-law, cunyada, sister-in-law, she's staying with me. Yesterday, she took one of my cars and she went to the farm for four days. I said, oh my God, I need two cars. My wife's busy, I'm busy, my kids are busy. Please, I need two cars. But then I stopped and I thought, wow, I don't deserve one car, but God gave me two. Of course I can be generous to my sister-in-law. She's staying from Canada. She needs to visit her family. Please take the car. Be blessed. Enjoy. God gave it to me freely. I lend to you freely. The understanding. Generous people are the ones who understand grace. That everything came to them for free. Not because we deserve it, but because God blessed us. If he blessed me, I can be a blessing to you because huh, it's free for me. Amen. Okay, number six, God also anoints the diligent. Say diligent. The diligent. I like this. Can we try and read this together as well? Proverbs 13 and 4. The soul of a lazy man desires and has nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made rich. Again, that word rich. You've learned, you've learned some Hebrew today. What's the Hebrew for rich? The word dashan. Huh? Say dashan. Uh, and what does it mean? It means fat. Oily. <laughs> you know, it's good news for the ladies here. You should be fat in the anointing. Amen. Uh, good news for some of the boys too. Amen. Be fat in the anointing, okay? And who are the ones who get the fatness? Who get the anointing? The ones who are diligent. Diligence is opposite to laziness. When you look at the life of Jesus, he, didn't, he called many people from problematic backgrounds. He called fishermen. He called publicans, tax collectors. Huh? He called prostitutes. In Portuguese, it's easy. Pescadores, prostitutas e publicanos. Os três pés. These were people with strange backgrounds. Okay? Tax collectors. They want your money. They're working, working. Give me your money. Give me your money. Give me your money. I want money. Money, 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 money. Pescadores, fishermen, fishing all night. Huh? Fish, fish, more fish. I need fish, I need fish, fish. Where's the fish? I get up early, I go to bed late. I want fish. And prostitutes, they work day and they work night. 
What am I saying to you? These are workers. Jesus never called a lazy man. He called sinners, big sinners, but he didn't call the lazy. They were all busy people. They were busy doing the wrong thing, serving money, sleeping around, but Jesus called them, sanctified them, and gave them a new purpose. Hallelujah. Lazy people, God can't help. Uh, people who want to change, people who want more, God can help. People who are passive, don't want to change, they never receive. The Bible says that God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Diligently. So if you want to get more anointing, you can choose it. Go after it. Be diligent. Study the Word. Sing out in the Spirit. Pray in tongues and you'll get it. Be diligent with your life. Say Amen. Finally, God anoints those or the ones who believe, the believers. Okay, but when I say believers, I'm not saying skrench. I'm not saying in general. I'm saying when you believe, you get anointed. And let's go just quickly a little bit deep. 2 Samuel chapter 1, verse 21. The scripture says, Mountains of Gilboa, may you have neither dew nor rain. Okay? No, no, no rain, mountains. May no showers fall on your terraced fields. For, because, there the shield of the mighty was despised. The shield of Saul no longer rubbed with oil. So this is a cry of the heart saying that there's going to be no rain. There's going to, and remember, rain is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. There's going to be no anointing. Why? Because the shield has no oil. Quite profound this. Quite deep. Let's quickly open it. The shield in Scripture points to faith. Ephesians chapter 6 talks of the armor of God. The sword of the Spirit the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, but the shield of faith. The shield of the word of faith. Hallelujah. When you have faith, when your heart, when your life has the defense of the word of faith mixed with oil, then you'll find power. Then you'll find rain. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. You've, in order to have the anointing, you need word and you need spirit. You need shield and you need oil. If you separate oil from the shield, if you don't rub, if you don't mix oil into the shield, then you'll find no rain and no victory. You understanding what I'm saying? Hallelujah. You got to be a believer. Speak out the word of God. There are many things, many circumstances that will tell you that life's just going to give you trouble. That you're going to go down. That the sickness will kill you. That the bill will never be paid. That the marriage will never be resolved. But I'm here to tell you, don't speak those things. Speak the word of faith. Declare, my house is blessed. My marriage is getting better. I'm prospering more and more. I'm going from glory to glory, from victory to victory. Hallelujah. Rub oil into your shield. Keep it subtle. Keep it flowing. Don't become stiff. Don't become stale. Don't become dry. Don't become oil, uh, old. Stay fresh. Get fresh oil in your life. Declare God's promises in faith and you'll find the rain begins to fall again. Shout Amen. If you have never personally accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, pray these words after me. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins and ask you to wash me clean with your blood. Give me a new heart and a fresh start. Come into my life and be my Lord and Savior.
Now that you have prayed that prayer, we believe that you are saved. Get in touch with us at thegreatmission.org to receive your free digital booklet, Welcome to the Family. The ministry of Giles Stevens is maintained by the prayers and financial support of monthly partners. More and more people are looking up rather than around for answers to life and are open to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Wherever the ministry is holding campaigns, thousands are responding and seeing real life transformation. Would you consider joining us taking the gospel of Jesus Christ to the nations by a monthly contribution, no matter the amount? Friends, Together we can fill God's throne room with people from every tribe, nation and tongue. That's the vision we have for all of our partners, that in the future when we stand before the Lord, we will be able to celebrate together when we see people from all nations coming in as a result of your support. So if you'd like to become a partner of the ministry, please visit us at www.thegreatmission.org. Thanks again for tuning in. Remember to subscribe and to share this podcast with a friend so that God's kingdom can keep growing in you and through you. God bless you.